Who here is a boss? Yeah, you guys are bosses. I don't mean boss as like a really cool guy. I'm sure, I'm sure many of you are a boss, right? You, but uh, no, I'm talking about like for reals, like who's in a position of authority somewhere? Yeah, all right, so a lot of us are, right? Um, even if you're not, even if you're not in a position of authority, one day you're gonna be in a position of authority, okay? Like you'll, you'll be like the captain of your cheer team or president of your school, which is really cool, or uh, president of the United States, or something else like that, or your shift, the shift leader at McDonald's. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to guess that at some point or another, each one of us in here is going to be in some kind of position of authority. Um, who's ha who has a boss right now? So I have a boss, yeah. So most of us have a boss of somewhere, some way or another, right? Um, I'm going to take that word boss. We're using that word tonight. But really, I want you to think of just anybody that's in authority over you, right? So your parents, grandparents, they're your bosses, right? Um, your actual boss at your work. Like if you work somewhere and you have a boss, boom, a boss. Poof. Right? Or uh, a coach or a referee or the president or, I don't know, a lot of other people can be bosses in your life. Think about those people, right? Sometimes, bosses can frustrate us, right? Anybody ever been frustrated with their boss or somebody in charge of them? Boom. Me too. I hope my boss doesn't watch this later. Uh, here's the deal, though. We all get frustrated by our, our bosses, and everybody has a boss. Even the oldest person in this room, like, it's not just a teenager thing. Like, when you're a teenager, like, man, I was horrible at, when I was in high school. I was good in middle school, then the high school things just went bad. And I had a huge problem with my bosses, with authority in my life. You can ask my sister, I prefer you didn't, but if you do, you'll, you'll find out. Just, yeah, I was a turd. Um, and I was like, well, when I get older, you know, that'll pass. Doesn't pass, okay? You're always gonna have someone in authority over you. You can ask the oldest person in this room, okay? And they're gonna, Tommy will tell you, <laughs> Tommy will tell you that uh, you'll always have someone in authority over you. There's a lot of different reasons why. There's a lot of different reasons why authority can frustrate us. Um, and as you get older, the reasons will change. Your position in life will change the reason why your boss frustrates you, right? So we're not going to focus on that. All right? We're not going to focus on the why so much. There is one reason why, um, and it's an attitude of ourselves. And really, it's this idea that we think we could do better, right? For me, that was always it. Like, ugh, if my parents would just discipline me this way, I'd be a golden child. If they would just do this, you know, I'd be so, if my coach would just teach me this way, or if he would have said it that way, if I was the boss, if I was my own boss, man, it wouldn't, I would not be this disrespectful, right? You guys, you guys get that? You guys feel that way? Or is it just me? It's just me. Perfect. It's cool. You guys are all perfect. That's fine. It's cool. Um, it's, it's really not so much that our bosses are doing a bad job, right? It's just that we think we could do better. And you know what? I'll give you that. Sometimes I have seen some bosses, and I would much rather Zane be my boss than some of the bosses that I've had in my life, right? Shout out to Zane. But here's what happens. Here's what happens when we lose sight of that, when we think, oh, I can do better. When we think, like, oh, I can do better, or I should be the boss, or my boss isn't good enough. It, it can get us down a couple of paths. One of those paths is that we, we get into a place where we challenge authority, all right? So that was me. I was the guy that challenged authority. And what I'm talking about is I don't agree with what my boss is saying. And so I'm going to challenge him on that. I'm like, so why do we do it that way? You know, or why, should I, why should I listen and do it that way? Why should, uh, why should I do that? It doesn't make sense. Wouldn't it be better if we did it this way? You know, you ever find yourself asking your parents that? Like, 
why are we doing this? This is dumb. Shouldn't we do it this way? Or, or your boss at work or your coach, like, hey, why don't we um, run this play instead of that play? Or whatever it may be. And you kind of give some talk back. Um, you put your own input in, and you're like, yeah, okay, thanks. You're like 12 years old. Never mind. I'm 45, so I'm the coach. Okay, sit down. Um, or we ignore authority. This was never me, but um, some of us will ignore authority. And so our, we don't agree with what they're saying, and so we'll just kind of check out and be like, yeah, okay. And then you sit there and don't do what they ask you to do, right? Um, another thing is that we just outright rebel against them. And so we'll challenge them and we'll question them. And then we won't even do what they say. Like if they tell us to sit, sit down, we'll stand up. If they tell us to run this play, we run an opposite play. If they tell us to clean it this way, we clean it the exact opposite way. Um, because we don't agree. But really, no matter what we do, whether we challenge them or ignore them or rebel against them blatantly, here's the deal. It doesn't work out for you. It doesn't, it doesn't work out. I promise you that. Um, you, we can talk later if you don't believe me. I'll tell you how it doesn't work out. So we're going to look at this passage in Scripture, okay? It's going to kind of help direct us on how we should handle some authority in our life, all right? So go to Hebrews 13. It's a cool, Hebrews is one of my favorite books. And the cool thing about it, um, I think there's like this mystery to it because we don't know who wrote it, right? Most letters we know who wrote it, but Hebrews is just kind of, who knows? We do know who it was written to, and it was written to, to Jews who had converted to Christianity, so to Jewish Christians. And so from that, we can tell that what's written in here is applicable to us directly because aren't we Christians too, right? So we know that these words are good for us to adhere to, right? So we're in Hebrews 13, verse 17. This passage talks a lot about how to handle people in a position of authority over us, and even um, how to handle people that are in positions under us. This verse is Hebrews 13, 17. It says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. All right, that's the first half. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. So it's pretty straightforward, right? What's this verse saying? Well, it's saying to have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. Straightforward. Let's talk more about that. Um, Having confidence in our leaders has a big impact on how we respect them and how we obey them. Usually, if you have confidence in your leader and they, you're like, okay, I trust this guy. They're going to do a good job. I believe what they're saying. It's probably the right thing. You don't usually have a problem listening to people like that, do you? No. So how do we have confidence in somebody that we don't have confidence in? Like, we just don't think they're that good of a leader. I'll tell you how. We just choose to. Mind-blowing facts. Just poof. Right? We just choose to believe in them, right? It's tough. It's really tough. But we say, you know what? Even though it may not make sense to me, I'm going to trust that this person's in authority over me for a reason, right? I'm going to trust, just going to choose to believe in them. I'm going to believe in what they're saying. Even if we're sure that they're right, or that they're not right, and we're sure that we're right, I'm going to act as if I believed them and do what they tell me to do, right? We can believe that people are good and that their intentions are good. So even if we think, okay, this isn't the best way to do it, but I'm going to choose to believe that my boss has good intentions and has a good heart on the matter. And so I'm going to trust that, and I'm going to listen and fall into obedience in that. The second part of that verse says to submit, and that idea is kind of like to accept it, right? So accept that they're your leader. Accept that the relationship between you and your boss is that. They are an authority over you, and you are not an authority over them, right? You are to obey them. So you got to accept that, and then you got to fall in line with that and what that means. Um, so any situation dealing with authority, and the first step is to accept the relationship that you're in with them. And then, so we will, we'll first we'll, sorry, we'll choose to believe in them, and then we will submit to them, right? So in those two situations, both really challenging things to do, right? Sometimes we can still get really frustrated. You guys ever ask like a five-year-old to clean up the crayons and then they don't want to. That's a really specific situation. But if you do that, a lot of times it can result in like kicking and screaming and like crying and crowns flying across the room. And I hope that you guys don't throw tantrums like that. But I know that sometimes inside you want to do that, right? You can be like, oh, I really don't want to listen right now. I still feel that way sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's so frustrating. I don't want to do this. So remember the second half of that verse. It says, they keep, and this is talking about people in authority over you, they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. So in other words, that, that verse is saying that 
your bosses have bosses, right? Poof, thank you. He's getting it. Poof. Your, your bosses have bosses, all right? Coaches have to answer to the principal. Your parents have to answer um, to their leaders, their families, and to the government. And then managers have, like, owners to submit to, and it's all these crazy things. But even your bosses have bosses, so remember that. So I'm going to pause here real quick and talk about something that's pretty, pretty serious. Um, some of us are in situations where our authorities are abusing that power to a pretty heavy level. And it might be physical abuse or like a verbal or emotional abuse. And they might be doing some really like evil things with their position of authority over you. And if that's, if that's you, if that's something that you're, you're dealing with at home or at work or in school or wherever it may be, Remember, this verse is not just saying like, okay, well, you got to submit your authority, so just deal with it. It's not what it's saying. This verse says that all authority must give an account to somebody, all right? So the best thing that you could do tonight might be to tell one of your small group leaders about that, and then we'll help you take the next step. And that might be an extreme thing, but it might be reporting that to the police or, or to the principal if it's your coach or something like that, okay? So if that's like something you're dealing with right now, I want you to know that, um, that's not okay, and I'm really sorry that you're going through that, but we need to report that. We need to, those people need to submit to their authorities as well. I'm going to move on from that. Most of us are in situations like that, praise God. But whatever our situation is, if we feel like we're, our bosses are abusing their power or, or they're just not good bosses or not good parents or not good coaches or teachers or whatever it may be, we need to remember that they ultimately answer to the Lord for the way that they lead, for the way that they hold their position of authority, right? A huge problem of mine growing up is I really did feel like I could be a better parent than my parents, which is foolish, you know? I'm like 14, come on. And so I try to correct them, and I try to parent them almost. It doesn't work out. What I needed to realize, what I wish I could have told myself in high school was, first of all, be quiet, okay? Just, just stop. You're not a better parent. Second of all, realize that even if your parents are in the wrong, you need to realize that they will have to answer to the Lord for that, and he will bring justice, and he will correct that. And that's something that he'll deal with. That's, that's not on you. It's not on you to make your parents better, to make your coaches better. It's not on you to correct your bosses, okay? That's between them and the Lord, all right? Another thing I wish I would have realized is that when I did that, it really just made things worse for me. Anybody ever, like, challenged authority and then, like, gained more freedom for it? Unless you're William Wallace? Like, no, it just doesn't work out, right? Yeah, that's kind of true. Um, there's one more piece of this verse I want to read. So the, the, the last part of that verse says, do this so that there, and it's talking about people in authority, do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that would be of no benefit to you. So he's saying submit to them, believe in them, act in obedience to them, remember that they will give an account to the Lord for their actions, and do those things, not just because it's the right things to do, but do it because it will be a joy for them, and in turn, that will benefit you, right? If I could summarize this whole like Bible verse or tonight's, the point of tonight, it's just that life is better when you honor the boss, all right? So that's what I want you guys to remember. Life is better when you honor the boss. So how do we do that? How do we honor our bosses? Well, the first thing we need to recognize that to honor somebody just means to show them great respect. To recognize their authority and then give them due respect. The second thing we need to do before we leave here is we need to identify those people in authority in our life. So think real, like, two seconds. Think about people in authority in your life. Two seconds. Next, think about those great bosses, okay? You got that great boss in your mind? Like really good parent, really good teacher, whatever. Let's learn from them. One day, like I said, in the beginning, you guys are probably going to be in positions of authority. So take note of what they're doing that works well. Respect that and strive for that. The next thing is we need to say something. So pay attention to the way you speak. Think about the easy boss, the boss that's easy to listen to. Pay attention to the way you speak to them, right? Let's give a thank you 
let's give encouragement, let's affirm them, let's just appreciate um, how good of a boss that they are. And then think about the difficult boss. Maybe saying something is actually saying nothing. So instead of rebelling or running your mouth back to them, let's just start with being quiet and listening. And let's, let's start with something simple like saying thank you. Just, yeah, thank you for leading me. Or, or thank you for the schedule. Or thanks for dinner, Mom. Whatever it might be. Let's start with little things of respect like that and then move on to bigger things. And then do something. Obey them, okay? So the difficult boss, let's just make a point to obey them and let's do it with joy. I can take out the trash for my mom and I can pull it out and kind of drag my feet to the can and throw it in and then slam the, the lid or whatever. Like, that's not respecting my authority. That's still being a turd. All right, our actions speak louder than words. You guys have always heard that, right? So with our body language and with our words, let's, let's respect our authority in that way, all right? The challenge question I'm going to give you, I'm going to pray, but I want you to think about this as, as you go to small groups. Would your life really be better if you decided to honor the boss? All right? So I'm going to pray, and then we'll go to small groups. Father, I just want to thank you for tonight. Um, thank you for your word, and the, just the truth that's in it. Lord, I pray that we would um, listen to the words that are written in Hebrews. Lord, I pray that we would submit to our authority. I pray that we would lift them up and respect them. Um, and I pray that ultimately we would remember that they answer to you, and that's something that we can trust you with, Lord. You're so faithful, and you're so good to take care of us. Um, and so we just pray that we would recognize that and have confidence in you and um, just the authority that you have in our life. We love you. It's your name we pray. Amen.